everybody. Welcome, welcome back. It's been a hot minute, nice to see ya. Um, today I thought what I would do is I would share my 21 books for 2021. So I've decided to scrap the idea of a TBR for like months and I've decided to just keep this as my overall yearly TBR. I've realised that just having a monthly TBR, it was just getting on top of me. I was getting stressed when I didn't read the books that I'd set out to read for that month. So I'm kind of going to be a bit more easy breezy loosey goosey. So that's the plan. That's what I'm going to use this for. And I feel like a lot of people have made this video and I want to get involved. So here we are. Without further ado, I'm going to tell you the 21 books that are on my list for 2021. Oh, also just to preface, if I look down at any point, it's because I have my iPad with loads of notes about like the, what's the word? What is the word? The synopsis, um, just in case, because obviously there's quite a lot. I've not read them, so I don't really know what they're all about because I enjoy going into books, not knowing too much detail about them. So yeah, that's why I'm looking down sometimes. But anyway, uh, as I've said, I'm just gonna jump right on into the video. The first book that is on my list is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. So this has been circulating on booktube and bookstagram for what feels like forever. It's everywhere I turn. I cannot escape this book and I am so happy about it. I want to read this book so bad. Um, I think I'm gonna make a reading vlog purely just based around this book. Very, very excited. Big anticipated read for me the premise, the synopsis. Let's dive right in. So basically this book follows the life of Adi LaRue, kind of self-explanatory because it is in the title, but basically she makes a deal with the devil where she wants to be immortal, but the catch is the people that she encounters will forget that she existed. So basically no one remembers her. Skip 300 years down the line of her living this life of immortality, but like with nobody remembering her, she meets a person called Henry in a bookstore who remembers her. And then, you know, stuff happens after that. I don't know what happens after that. So we'll see. But yeah, that's the first book. Very excited about it. So the next book that I have on my list is What a Time to Be Alone by Chidera Egaru. And this is a gender studies and feminism book, which focuses on self-worth, learning about toxicity within relationships, whether that's friendships or like, you know, relationships, non-platonic relationships. Chidera coined the saggy boob movement. No, hashtag saggy boobs matter and is basically just all a book about reclaiming your autonomy, knowing your self-worth and how to love yourself. So very excited, very much in need of some self-love. So yeah, looking forward to this. I'm also wanting to read more non-fiction books this year. So I believe this counts. Yeah, sure, it counts. Of course it counts because it's not fiction, it's true. Everything in this book is true. So there you go, that's this book. The next book is Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. Again, this is another book that has been circulating for a while on booktube and I am so looking forward to getting around to reading this finally. I am using this video as a reason to read this book sooner than I thought. This is a contemporary fiction where we look at a woman called Alex who is a white blogger who asks her babysitter Amira to take her child to the supermarket and basically whilst she's there she gets accused of kidnapping this white child and Basically, we just follow the story after that. Alex wants to try and write the situation. However, those kind of feelings get lost within this kind of like selfish, mismanaged kind of area. I don't know how to describe things. Please, Lord, help me. I'm looking forward. I think it's such a unique premise. A lot of people say that it's quite funny um, whilst still being able to, you know, uh, convey topics such as racism and still be able to have those important discussions around it whilst being, you know, comedic. So I'm very looking forward to that. I think it sounds really good. So there you go, that's all. The next book is Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. Now, I feel like I have talked about this book to the death. Um, so this is going to be a reread. I've definitely spoken about the fact that I wanted to read the physical copy and not just the audio book. And again, what a good reason 
to read this book again by including it in this video. So that's what I've done. Da da da. Yeah. Um, the premise. Again, I shall discuss the premise with you. So this book follows 12 different characters surrounding topics as racism, intersectionality, there's representation of the LGBTQIA plus community within this book. And it basically just tells their story dependent on like, you know, how their lives have panned out. And they all intertwine in some way or another. Alongside this, each person's story kind of takes place in a different part around the world. So it's just a wonderful book about life which is really good and I really enjoyed it and I bet I'm gonna enjoy it even more now that I have it in a physical copy. Delightful stuff. Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. This is part of the Farsia trilogy but I believe there's a lot more books within this world, I'm not too sure. My sole reason for picking this book up is because of a frolic through fiction which is Ashley's channel. She talks about it a lot on there and it has intrigued me. So here I have the first book within the series. So within this book we follow Fitz who is a royal bastard son and he's kind of been like cast out, not accepted, but then he gets asked to become a royal assassin and there's something to do with magic in there which is called the wit I believe. Yeah it's magic art known as the wit and it's connected to animals that's all i got off goodreads i'm not gonna lie to you um so who knows i'm excited i'm intrigued we love a bit of magic up in here very excited so yeah there you go assassin's apprentice the next book i'm going to talk to you about is shatter me by tahera mafi now this is a, another book which is in a series i actually won this in a raffle over on camel and reads i will leave the link down in the description this book is all about a girl called Juliet who is locked up in a cell by something called the re-establishment. I'm not too sure like what that is, but she was locked up by them. And the reason being her skin is poisonous to the touch and she's had enough. She decides that she wants to have her own freedom, make her own fate and she wants to leave. I believe like the re-establishment want to use her in war as like, you know, a weapon that was the word there we go I was struggling for a minute um yeah they want to use her as a weapon but she wants to decide her own fate and yeah that's the book that's what this book is about I don't know how to finish talking about synopses of books and then it ensues then the story ensues but then I feel like I would be saying that word far too much so I'm just gonna say that's that one so the next book that I want to talk about is The Opposite of Loneliness, a collection of essays and stories by Marina Keegan and this is a post-humanist? Yes. The word I'm trying to say is posthumous. Post-humanist, you dumb bitch. Oops. And this is a post-humanist collection of essays that deal with things such as hope, uncertainty and the idea of possibility within the world and it just feels like it's gonna be a lot of good vibes. Like I don't know, I just feel like <laughs> this is the book that I need in 2021. Like we had such a rough 2020 and I feel like this just holds a lot of hope. That's the word I was looking for. I just feel like it's just hopeful essays and I'm really looking forward to feeling good. <laughs> so this made it to my list. Children of Blood and Bone by Tommy Adiemi. So this made my list because this was one of the first books I purchased after deciding I wanted to read a lot more books and be a part of the booktube community. Have I read it? Clearly not. So this is something that I have been waiting to read for a while. I just never got round to it. Don't know why. Shit happens, my friends. What do you expect from me? Anyway, so this is a West African inspired book based on the idea that the people in charge, like the king, has decided that magic just should not exist anymore in this place where they are living. It's called Orisha, I believe, is the magical kingdom. We follow Zaley navigate this world in which people who don't possess any magical abilities be trapped like second class citizens, which is weird because the king has like said like, no, magic just doesn't exist. Like, 
I don't understand, obviously, because I've not read it yet, so everything's a bit, you know, muddled in my brain. But the main character, Zaylee, like, is navigating this kind of world and deciding her own fate, I suppose, during this whole thing. And I'm really looking forward to it. So, yeah, that's this book. And also, look at that. Ooh. Misery by Stephen King. Now, I've never read a Stephen King. I was going to start with it, but then I thought that was too, you know, what's the word? Optimistic, I'll say. Um, it's a big book and I don't think I'm mentally prepared for it. So I settled for Misery. Now, this is one of Noelle's favourite books and I'm intrigued, to say the least. So the premise is we have this writer called Paul Sheen who has written this book called Misery and he does really well off it. You know, he becomes famous and yeah, he's living the dream and then he's in a car crash. Dun, dun, dun. He wakes up, not in a hospital bed, but in Annie Walker's like house, but like it's like a retreat. It's not a retreat, but like it's like hidden away. I don't know what that is. But the house is in the way and basically she kidnaps him and makes him write a sequel to Misery and she refuses to let him go. That's all I know and I'm interested, I'm intrigued, um, I'm embracing it, I want to know more so I'm going to read it this year. That's the plan. <laughs> Next book is Queenie by Candice Carty Williams. So I tried reading this last year, but then I think the reading rush came about and then I didn't end up like reading it. And I just, you know, I left it on the shelf and I shouldn't have, I just shouldn't have done that. But anyway, she's here. We're gonna, we're gonna discuss. So Queenie is a British Jamaican woman who is trying to navigate the world. You know, she's going through a lot there were multiple things listed on Goodreads and I didn't want to recite them. Basically, she's going through some shit. And this book just delves into what it is like to be a woman within the modern day world. We see stuff such as racism in the book. It's dark humid. You know, we have moments of joy, loss. Loads of different stuff is going on in here. And I'm very excited. Now, A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. It's not a book that I'm looking forward to because I think they that's they are the wrong words to describe this. So I was never going to buy this book because of all of the, you know, the aftermaths of people's experiences of reading the book, specifically Noelle's, really made me question why I wanted to read the book in the first place. But then I came across it in like a crate full of free books and I thought this is a sign so I picked it up and here it is and I've had it ever since and one of my friends recently has just read it and kind of described to me how from like a, lit a literary point of view how beautiful it was and how connected you become with the characters and it's unlike anything else um and I want to experience that this book comes with a plethora of trigger warnings. I will list them all down in the description if this is something that you're interested in. Um, but all I know is that it follows four students who go move from Massachusetts, 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 I don't know how to pronounce it, wow, um, to New York City and they're, you know, they're broke, they're teenagers, I believe that's where we start. But we kind of see their life unfurl and how their relationships change and I believe how some relationships change due to you know like childhood trauma and things like that um but yeah something that I'm going to be reading I'm also going to be doing an isolating reading book on this as well so I will obviously be able to go more in depth once I've read it and obviously I will discuss it at length in that reading vlog because I feel like it is definitely something that needs its own separate video you know so from this point onwards, I'm going to be referring to my iPad a little bit more, just obviously because I don't have the physical copies. So yeah, if I'm looking down, that's why. So the next book that I have on my list for 2021 is The Guild of Wands by Namia Fauna. Now this is a book that I pre-ordered ages ago and I think it's coming February, maybe March time. I'm not sure roughly when the release date is. I'll leave it down here somewhere. Um, 
But in this book, we are transported to a world where there is a blood ceremony. If your blood runs gold, then it means that you are impure and you're like cast out of society. And then the main character whose name I believe is Decca. My apologies if I'm pronouncing that wrong. I was torn between Decca or Decca, spelled D-E-K-A. When she turns 16, she undergoes the blood ceremony and her uh, and her blood runs gold. And then we just get to kind of see what happens after that. And I believe it's kind of like an uprising type based story. Very much looking forward to it. So the next book is a non-fiction book called Fathoms, The World and the Whale by Rebecca Giggs. Now this book explores whales. I love whales specifically a humpback whale. I believe this book was inspired when she saw a whale washed up on a beach in Australia and inspired her to write this book. This book discusses natural history, philosophy and science to help explore questions such as how do whales experience economic change? Will our connection with whales change dependent on social media? This book addresses nature at a time of environmental crisis and I'm ready to read about that sort of content. That sort of content? Sure. On top of the fact that it's about whales? Wow. I'm here for it. So that is something that I want to read in 2021. And then kind of in the same vein, I really want to read We Are The Weather, Saving The Planet Begins At Breakfast by Jonathan Saren Foa, I believe that is the full name. I can't quite remember off the top of my head and I can't spell, so I'm unsure if I wrote that down correctly. This is a non-fiction book which explores the climate crisis and looks at the task of saving the planet and how we need to reckon with ourselves. The reason why I want to read this so much is because Lena Norms talks about it all the time and I'm getting FOMO. I want the inside scoop. I want to understand. And it is something that I am personally invested in, as I believe we all should be when thinking about the climate crisis and, you know, what our part in it is. Hello. The next book is the Book Thief. Wow. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> book Thief by Marcus Zusak. Now, this book is about the Nazis communism and the burning of the books and there's this young girl the main character who is an orphan and lives with a rich family who owns a library no nope, that's not what happens at all she doesn't live with a rich family i thought she said that she did no she just meets that woman who owns a library uh, she just meets my bad she meets a woman who owns a library and basically she steals some books before they get burned and then the woman's like Oh, I have a library. <laughs> Let's read together. So, this... such, a, such a chaotic information. Yeah. I hate it. <laughs> yeah, and this is the only one that's chaotic. The rest of them, quite clean. Uh, <laughs> Beth told me what happens in this book. I didn't write it down, so that's the best you're going to get. I'm excited. Beth got me this for Christmas as well. So, there you go. This is on the list. I want to take it home. want to take it home. Pins and needles. I think you're really cool. I like you a lot. Maybe we could hang, hang out or something. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> the next book is The One That Got Away by Melissa Pimentel. So this is a, a romance book. And basically we follow a couple, Ruby and... Who is it? Ruby and Ethan. And basically they used to date when they were younger. Then their relationship, you know, drifted apart because Ruby wanted to focus on her career, etc, etc. And then, dun dun dun, she's going to have to face him years later at her sister's wedding because Ethan is the best man. And I believe romance ensues. I believe it to be true. You heard it here first. Murder! <laughs> the next book that I want to read is Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. And this has been circulating on booktube for the longest time and I cannot wait to get my little grubby hands on it. Um, this is about a boy called Yadriel whose Latin ex family is having trouble accepting his true gender and he becomes determined to prove himself um, a real... He becomes determined to prove himself a real brujo and sets out to find the ghost of his murdered cousin unsure as to what a brujo is i'm not gonna lie 
but I will find out this year. The next one is Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. This is a graphic novel that again has been circulating and everybody talks it up and I want a piece of it. So that's what I'm gonna do. Fantastic. The premise, I hear you ask, I'm gonna tell you. The two characters, Charlie, who is a boy, who is openly gay, and Nick, who is a rugby player, and they meet at grammar school and friendship ensues. After I believe Charlie just, no, after I believe Nick lightly bullies Charlie, they then become friends. And then Charlie catches himself falling for Nick. But he's like, this could never happen. But it could. Right. The next book is The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. This is a, I believe, it's a romance enemy to lovers trope which is in an office setting. The two characters, Lucy and Joshua, are always pitted against each other and always trying to like one up each other. And I believe they are both going for the same promotion at work. And romance ensues. You've used that word three times. I've used it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> the next book is Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert, which is the first book in the Brown Sisters books. I wanna read them all. I'm gonna start off with this one. Um, Chloe Brown is a chronically ill computer geek who has like a list of things that she wants to do and enrolls Redford to help her complete said list. I don't know how they meet. Didn't, didn't find that out, but I'm intrigued and sparks fly between the two. Romance ensues. <laughs> sparks fly. Um, <laughs> lots of people are just raving about like the three books which i believe is you've got get a life chloe brown take a hint danny brown and e fill in the blank don't know the last one but everybody keeps on banging on about them and i've got fomo so i'm gonna read it <sighs> we've made it to the last book the 21st book, This Green and Pleasant Land by Alicia Malik. Now this book looks at Bilal and his family. His mother asks him on her dying day to go to his home village and build a mosque. And she just wants her son to remember that he's a Muslim because he is constantly trying to separate himself from that. He does not, he's keen to forget that he is a Muslim. And then the book just comments on what makes us who we are, who do we want to be, and how far would we go to fight for it? Bah, bah. So yeah, wow, wow, what we, wow. There are all the books that are on my 21 books for 2021 list. Some honorable mentions, what I am going to mention <laughs> is this year I really want to finish the Twilight Saga that includes Midnight Sun and I'm going to include the graphic novel Beth Got Me For Christmas in that as well. Alongside that I also want to read all of Cassandra Clare's works in terms of like The Mortal Instrument, Infernal Devices, like The Magnus Bane Chronicles and the others that I can't remember off the top of my head right now i want to try and complete all those and they're they're kind of like hefty but yeah if you've made it this far thank you so much for sticking around i really appreciate it it's been a good one lads on that note i'll see you in the next one sick and goodbye bye bye now.